we go ahead and get started? We had a few technical difficulties that we've managed to work our way through. So uh, we're here to go ahead and provide an update on the community generated roadmap. My name is Carol Barrett. I'm with Intel and part of the product working group. With me today is. I'm Nate Zeman. I'm with IBM. And. Nate, Hugh Lemmings from Rexpace. So the three of us will go ahead and work together to talk about the content for today. Um, so this content was uh, developed by a team of 16 people that were working from the product work group. They represent uh, companies across our community and across the different industries that we, we serve, um, working together with different projects to gather information and synthesize it and then create the information that we're going to share with you today. The process that we use for creating the roadmap starts with looking at what projects to include. We look at the information that we gather from the user survey on what projects are being adopted by operators in, the, uh, in their deployments today as one indicator of what projects to include. We look for things that have 10% adoption and above. <clears throat> then we also include projects that are sort of essential to an OpenStack deployment, things like Oslo and RevStack, but wouldn't show up in the user survey. And then the third thing we consider is, what are the projects that might be new to OpenStack or we're seeing rapid adoption and a change in the, the interest level in the community or in operators or prospective operators to go ahead and guide which projects we include inside the roadmap. <clears throat> As you will see, uh, we're including 28 projects in this, this version of the roadmap. Um, we start by looking at the baseline of information from the previous roadmap. Uh, then we do some data mining around uh, mid-cycle ether pads and specs and other repos to gather information to create a baseline that we sit down with the PTLs for the different projects and actually have an, an interview, um, a structured conversation to understand from them what is, uh, what's, what's accurate in what we data mined, what additional insights and things they know about that we want to add on to it. We take all of that and go off and uh, do a little work on it and then bring it back to the project team for them to review it and help uh, make sure that it's as accurate and as comprehensive as we can make it. As I said, in this project, in this release, we're covering 28 projects. Um, that's up from 22 in the last release we did and 17 from the first time that we did this in Vancouver. So we're seeing a steady uh, growth in the breadth of the projects that we're able to communicate the future releases around. And we're also seeing that the project teams are also talking more, talking earlier about what they're going to do later. So in all in all, we're getting better as a community about projecting where it is that we're going to go. When we compile the information, we um, organize it around themes. Um, in the last release, yeah, so now we'll keep everybody guessing what the themes are. Oh, that's lovely. Do I get help on that? Uh, no, Big Ten is bigger than that. So currently, we do not cover all of the projects that are in Big Ten. Yeah. So I'll just keep going while we work on that. Um, so uh, for this release cycle, there are five themes that you will see um, around the groupings for the capabilities. Um, that's ad adding one new theme from the last release that we did. Um, so the first theme is around scalability, and it's everything that you would expect that to be. It's around how, how broadly and how many, uh, well, how broadly you can scale a service and uh, performance at that scale as well. The next one is around resiliency, which I think is another term for high availability. Um, the next one after that is manageability. This has a couple of components from user experience as well as ease of operations. Uh, the next theme is around uh, modularity. And that has to do with um, how we uh, refactor projects to enable them to be uh, more um, easier extensible. The example I use for this one is Horizon has invested a lot of time in building a plugin architecture. So as new projects come into the big tent, they can write a plugin for Horizon that allows their information to be exposed to the operators through the common dashboard. Um, and then the um, the theme that we added in this cycle was interoperability. And there's multiple flavors of interoperability, from federation to uh, the interoperability across clouds 
to uh, interoperability and dependencies across projects to um, backward compatibility of projects as well. So you'll see these themes used throughout the different views that we organize the roadmap in. Uh, there was a session yesterday that was uh, held by a couple of the folks in the team to get feedback on the themes. Are these themes helpful? Are they the right granularity? Or do we, um, would it help people and be more valuable if we added more themes or if we redefined and subdivided some of these themes? So we'll have a conversation later this week when we have our work group meeting on Friday, get the results from that. So you can expect that we'll continue to evolve the information that we um, put in the roadmaps and how it's organized as we move forward. Okay. Yeah, seven. Great. Thank you. Um, so, uh, rarely is a conversation about roadmaps uh, completed without some type of a disclaimer. Um, in this case, we wanted to go ahead and just uh, give a baseline of the information that you're going to see is based upon conversations that we had in March uh, with the PTLs. Uh, so it was as Mitaka was getting uh, frozen and getting ready to release, but well before the design uh, summit conversations happening this week. So we're um, using best information to date. Uh, you can expect that there will be variations as Newton comes out and as Okada comes out, and that's why we do regular updates every quarter on the roadmap. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn over the conversation to Nate to go ahead and talk to you more about the details of the anatomy of the roadmap. Right. Okay. Thanks, Carol. And Carol, thanks for getting through that with all the technical dis difficulties with all such ease and poise. All right. So today I'm going to take you through the different views that we have that make up the roadmap. Um, specifically, uh, we've got everything from the 100,000 foot view all the way down to a 100 foot view. So if you think of it as elevation, very macro at the bottom, um, all the way up in, in space looking at the planet, uh, uh, the planet of OpenStack. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. If we look at the 100,000 foot view, I like to call this one the, uh, uh, the spider view. Um, this is an aggregate view of uh, all the different projects and which themes that they say they're investing in um, w across the, the next three releases. So Mataka looking with, uh, you know, a real rich set of data that we gather from the PTLs, um, as well as Newton and Akata looking at more forward-looking statements in those PTL interviews that we go through with all of the 28 different projects. Um, so it's kind of weighted. And you can see here looking at Newton, you can see how... Um, how resiliency is slightly reduced, uh, interoperability um, starts to move forward, um, and uh, interoperability actually includes things like backwards compatibility as well as cross-project uh, compatibility. So looking at things like Ironic plus Cinder for bare metal volume support, for instance, would be a good example of that. Um, looking into Okada, uh, that obviously has, uh, you know, the most potential for change in terms of the, you know, um, you know two releases forward. Um, so we use the data that uh, the PTLs are indicating. Um, for that, you can see how scale increases slightly, um, as well as modularity increases. There's been a lot of focus from the PTLs in wanting to take, take their code base and make it more modular. It always seems to be more of a forward-looking statement versus a statement we're working on right now. So if we continue to zoom in and we look at the 10,000 foot view, you end up with this wonderful eye chart. And so what can you really glean from this? Um, you need to look in specific places, and so we've actually done a little work to, to help you out. Um, if you look at the gold rows that are highlighted, you can see those are specific projects that are focusing on a theme across all three releases. So this is an area of focus for them, an area of investment, um, and one that's a long-term investment. Uh, so some of them that you may, we might want to call out would be heat and scalability, and uh, cinder for resiliency, looking at some of the things like active-active um, uh, on the cinder side. And then on heat with scalability, some of the parallel provisioning work that they're, they're doing long term. Um, if you look at the columns, you can see in blue, let me make sure it actually looks that color on this screen. 
Yes, they are right. Very good. Um, you can see for, uh, for a specific theme um, in Mataka, um, resiliency is one that is focused on, um, I guess we'll call it number two. If we take out the large box of manageability in the middle, which always cont continues to be the focus, um, you can see that uh, resiliency is next in terms of um, where the most projects are investing time and energy within a specific release, in this case, Metaka. But it's just an example. You can kind of go through and glean things for yourself here. Again, it's a really rich data set. We provide different views and some helpful hints like this so you can help glean things out. But you know, by all means, you know, we want you to, um, you know, to educate you today so that you can see these different views and you can, uh, can go into the data and look at the things that you're most interested in. Most people are interested in two or three specific projects. Um, you can see the big box of manageability there. Um, I guess I, I circled this because you know, it probably tells me that we're not granular enough and we call a lot of things manageability, right? So in the future, when we look at how do we evolve our themes for the roadmap, trying to get to a more granular level with manageability so that there's more data um, you know, that, we can, that we can mine and that we can categorize. If we continue to zoom down, into the thousand foot view. This is a release centric view. Um, and because of the level of detail, we start getting down to putting a subset of uh, projects on each slide. So the thousand foot view is actually made up of uh, eight slides. Um, and I'm only gonna take you through two, just as to give you some examples of the types of things that you can glean from the, uh, from the view. Um, as well as, as how, I guess, how to read it, right? So you can see the uh, Mataka, Newton, and Okada on the rows. Um, you know, here you can, you wanna focus on one specific project, right? So if I take Glance, for instance, under, under resiliency, um, you know, it just says Keystone Trusts, right? So, you know, we've got more level of detail here, but it's still titles. You're gonna have to drill down into that that 100-foot uh, macro view within a project to really get a lot of the data points. And even then, you're going to get links to blueprints and specs and a lot of the details for you to continue drilling down into that data set. Uh, but the Keystone Trusts, for example, um, pro, you know, it uh, uh, provides larger image uploads that previously failed due to uh, tokens expiring. Um, so um, that's certainly an important piece there. If you look at Glance again, we continue just to focus on just one project at a time, going down into Newton. You can see hardening security for their new V2 APIs, um, as well as wanting to get V1 APIs deprecated, something that they're gonna be talking about at length with the Nova team here this week in the Design Summit. So looking at just another example, this one has neutron, cinder, and heat. Um, if you look at heat for a minute, you can see that um, uh, under scalability, um, there is heat um, in the convergence phase one for Mataka, additional convergence engine work for Newton, and final engine parallelization um, in Okada. And you might say, what exactly is that? Um, that's really the scaled out parallel provisioning work uh, that the heat project wants to do in terms of being able to support higher scale and multiple concurrent uh, workload provisions. Um, and as you can see, you know, that, you know, I referenced that because it really goes back to um, you know, the 10,000 foot view um, in those gold rows that I had showed you um, that said, where is a project continuing to invest you know, long-term in one specific theme? So. so that takes us to zooming in even further down into the 100 foot view. And, and I'll turn it over to Hugh from Rackspace to take us through a couple of those. Thanks for that, Nate, and thank you for bearing with us with uh, our projector problems earlier. I think we uh, may have hit peak projector compatibility some years ago, actually. <laughs> so, uh, as my colleagues have pointed out, the, the, we've been progressively getting into more and more detail with each of these uh, each of these slides as we go. The thing we should point out is um, we're not actually expecting you to take all this in right now. The, uh, in the final slide, we actually have a URL which will take you through to a PDF of all this, so you can study it in detail at your own at your own pace. So to use Nova as an example, um, I, was, I did three of the uh, PTL interviews, spoke to Nova, to um, Neutron and to the docs team just to find out where they were at. So just quickly walk you through those. These slides have a consistent theme on the left, the um, 
description of the project over, obviously, is a compute service, and then on the right we provide a bit of detail about the, uh, the specifics of it. So in the case of Mataka, for example, uh, 82 specs were um, involved in the Mataka project, uh, Mataka release, I should say, and 63 blueprints. For most of these 100-foot um, views, as you go through, you'll see there's actually a link to the uh, video, video or phone interview that we did with the, uh, with the PTLs in each, each case. In Mataka, um, the focus there was on migration, for example, um, simplifying rolling updates and improving the API documentation. You'll start to see a theme of these uh, in the case of Nova, where uh, in Newton, continuing to focus on stability, uh, further documentation changes, and then some internal, I guess one of a better way to put it, under the hood changes around scheduler, scheduler improvements but, um, under the, underneath and uh, implementing support for cells V2. Uh, also, better interoperability with, um, with Neutron. Then we look at uh, Carter. This is, of course, a much more forward-looking view at this point. And the feedback we had from John Garbutt, who was the, uh, was the PTL, the expectation is they're, they're pretty much going to do a little bit of everything. So well, across those themes we spoke about earlier on in the presentation, they'll be, um, be looking at all of those. Ironic, which is the uh, bare metal provisioning engine for, for, uh, for OpenStack. I should have pointed out that um, we, we provide some basic stats around the number of individual contributors, 121 for the Mataka release in this case, and the number of companies that are represented uh, in, that, in that process. I shan't insult your intelligence by reading, also rereading what's on the right, but you can, again, you can see that same sort of flow of the different uh, emphasis they have on uh, the themes for all of the projects and the, uh, the underlying, underlying work they're doing. And last but not by no means least, the, uh, a, an example of the, another example of a 100-foot view for the documentation project, a very, very important part of OpenStack uh, being a, ultimately a developer-oriented um, project in so many ways. The um, Ataka Design Series looked at, they started the process of migrating from DocBook XML to RST, and as you can see there, at Mataka it was almost completed, and in Newton that, that transition has been complete, so you can start to get a sense of the, uh, of the forward progress on all these, these projects. And then um, for Okada, the, uh, the emphasis is perhaps more of an internal one for the documentation team in that making it more efficient, for making their own workflows more efficient within the documentation team, but also making it easier for the, the various projects involved in OpenStack to, to contribute to, that, to the documentation project directly. Uh, I have the pleasure of saying a few thanks on behalf of the team, um, my, obviously my, my co-presenters, but also to the, uh, the broader product working group and the PTLs who were uh, uh, very generous, actually, with their with their time in, in working with us and responding to our queries about the different directions they they had. The uh, the URL there is perhaps the the key takeaway uh, beyond the presentation itself. If you go to the uh, www.openstack.org/roadmap, about halfway down the page, the section you're looking for is community roadmap, and you'll actually be able to download the full uh, PDF of this presentation with, I think, of the order of 80 odd. Um, pages of information, sort of the, 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 the uh, 10,000, 1,000, 100 foot views for each of the different projects, and uh, the eye chart will be rather easier, I suspect, to see on your own screen than perhaps it was at the, uh, on the project. The Project Working Group um, is a relatively new group for OpenStack, and we've still very much um, welcome people uh, contributing and being involved, and particularly giving feedback as to whether the work we're undertaking is, is useful. Uh, there's a session tomorrow afternoon um, to the, where we'll be looking at both the user stories and also the development of the, the roadmap that we, uh, that we do. And of course, the OpenStack Foundation itself has an excellent um, YouTube channel where you can find out more sort of information. Now, I'm not sure how we're going for time to, to field questions we, we have. So um, if there's any questions from audience, I'd ask merely that we use the microphone over on the, on the left here because I believe that will my stage left, you're right. Um, if you have any questions, please um, please walk up to the microphone just so just for the benefit of the recording, and we'll go from there. Any anyone like to step up? It's that time of the afternoon we're all falling asleep, wondering why this guy has a funny accent. No, no questions. Right. Well, again, thank you for your time and your attention this afternoon, and enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you.